Hello my dear friends today we shall be discussing mcqs on a very important and a very interesting standard that is essay 315 okay yes i have picked up certain mcqs which are right at the center of the um, standard okay so come to question number 225 on page 45 of this uh, pdf okay yes come on essay 315 is what we are going to deal with today we'll see that this standard is so simple so simple questions but you need to be so careful while answering these mcqs okay so let's see what are the risks related question number 225 my dear friends kindly note and come to question 225 let's not waste time because within 10 minutes we have to finish these mcqs 10 mcqs in 10 minutes okay now risk related to quality of services provided by the entity is a type of okay risk related to quality of services provided by the entity see understand so the entity there is a entity which we have to deal with this entity is providing certain services and yes checking the quality of these services quality of these services now tell me my dear friends Yes, checking the quality of services is the duty of the auditor, or checking the financial statements components. For checking the financial statements components, so here checking the quality of services which the or which the client is providing is what quality risk, control risk. Yes, one minute. Audit risk, which risk? Or oh, none of the above? It is none of the above because this risk is a business risk. it is neither it is not an audit risk okay we are not responsible for the quality of work which is performed by the entity okay further while assessing the risk the auditor needs to consider now we are assessing the risk we are performing rap risk assessment procedures by understanding entity its environment and internal control while doing so while assessing the risk so this has been identified now this identified risks are being assessed by us so how will we do it yes based on materiality firstly material it has to be material so this is the point we have to see how many times it is arising yes or no so frequency is also important okay so both of the above would be the right answer let's quickly go ahead further yes while the auditor assesses the risk of material misstatement who is responsible for corrective actions to be taken guys while the auditor assesses the risk of material misstatement who is responsible for corrective actions to be taken see understand here we are assessing the risk of material misstatement assessment of material misstatement happens by understanding the entity environment and internal control setting up of internal control is the responsibility of management so corrective actions need to be taken by whom management we can only yes we can only communicate the deficiencies to the management significant deficiencies in internal control to those charged with governance under sa 265 but it is the duty of management to take corrective actions with respect to the risk of material misstatement further periodical review of activities within the entity so here activities which are performed within the entity are periodically reviewed now it is internal audit control check or questionnaire when we speak of questionnaire questions have been given which need to be answered as yes no not applicable so this is not the question yes internal audit internal control internal check internal control is the what activities which are being performed and the controls on that activities so this is definitely not the answer now now the quest is between internal audit or internal check under internal check if work is performed by mr orange yes this work needs to be yes this work needs to be done what needs to be checked by mr green this is internal check in simple language yes or no okay yes so here work performed day to day operations which are performed by one person is checked by the another person that is internal check but under internal audit we have seen that every activity has certain standard operating procedures sops right this sop is whether these activities are performed after as per sops or not checking this is a work of internal audit so here my correct answer would be a internal audit clear okay further the auditor needs to conduct enquiries from management and employees separately a true it can provide the information to the auditor that may not otherwise be communicated ultimately providing the information related to both management as well as employees fraud is important 
B. False. If inquiries have been made from management, no need to conduct it further. C. Inquiries is not a part of auditor's work. D. None of the above. So after reading those alternatives, I have realized that A is the correct answer because in inquiry can happen within the entity, with management or within the management. When we speak within the management, within the entity means what? Yes, see, we have seen that information and explanation can be obtained from anyone, anyhow, unrestricted access to information is to be given to the auditor under SA 210, preconditions for audit. Yes, okay. So, we have seen that inquiry can be performed and inquiry is what is a tool to obtaining audit evidence under SA 500, we have seen, right. So, we can inquire management also and we can inquire employees if required also, okay. Further, question 230, the auditor may can make inquiry with management operational personnel not directly involved with financial reporting persons charged with dealing with allegations of fraud all the persons mentioned above now read the question carefully auditor can make inquiry with management operational personnel not directly involved with financial reporting persons charged with dealing with allegations of fraud now a is definitely yes c persons charged with dealing with allegations of fraud is definitely yes we need to inquire we need to talk to them we need to understand we need to get more information from them and operational personnel not directly involved with financial reporting we have seen that auditor has to report on financial information but he has to consider financial as well as non-financial data right so he has to consider these also so the most perfect answer here would be D. Getting it? Okay. Yes. Let us go to question 231. The factors that contribute to inherent risk can be inherent risk means risk before internal control. Right. If you remember there it is a sunny day. You are wearing sunglasses. The moment you are wearing sunglasses, your eyes are at ease. But that does not mean that the sunny day has gone away. It still remains. Risk still remains if you remove the internal control stick risks are still there so risks which are inherent in the organization it may be because of inattentive management related party transactions where risk is very high management integrity management is what policies management is getting zero tolerance policy honesty it's a culture of honesty we have to see all of these so the answer would be so here the correct answer would be all of the above further Assertions are used by, see understand, assertions are used for preparing financial statements and these financial statements preparation are a responsibility of management. So assertions are used by management. Very simple question but see so tricky. Risk assessment procedures are, oh my god this should not have been there. Risk assessment procedures are exhaustive, inclusive, predefined, none of the above. Predefined. Do we know that yes this risk assessment procedure has to be performed? Or it is a matter of professional judgment. Every entity, every assignment is different. So it is the, yes, it is or professional judgment. So this is definitely not the answer. Then exhaustive in nature means these, these, these have to be performed. Inclusive means yes and, and, and whatever auditor feels right he needs to perform. So what should be the answer here? Inclusive. Yes, inclusive. Risk assessment procedures are inclusive. Further, second last question for the day. Can the information obtained from previous audit of the entity be used by the auditor for determining the risk of material misstatement and audit evidence? Once again, can the information obtained from previous audit of the entity be used by the auditor for determining the risk of material misstatement from audit evidences? That means they are saying can audit evidences of previous audits be used? Here, in this case, we need to see whether there are any significant changes. We need to check the effectiveness and risk as well. Okay. Yes. So, only if the previous audit was conducted by the same auditor. Entity is same. Auditor is same. Still, circumstances may change. So, this is definitely not the answer. Option C. Only if previous report shows clear opinion. Previous report shows clear opinion. That is for the previous year. But we are concerned with the current year. So, this is definitely not the answer. Now, let's read option B. Only after considering whether change have occurred and its impact on current audit. Yes. So B is definitely the most correct answer. Let's go ahead to the last question for the day. Assertions made by the management can be related to classes of transaction, balances of accounts, 
presentation and disclosure when we speak of classes and transactions that means we are referring to pnl account when we speak about balances of accounts that means we are referring to balance sheet and when we are speaking of presentation and disclosure we are speaking of notes and all of these together are nothing but financial statements an auditor has to report on financial statements entirely so assertions can be relatable to all of the okay yes so these are all the mcqs on sa 315 which speaks about identifying and assessing the risks of material misstatements through understanding entity environment and its internal control okay yes yes all the very best see you soon with another standard and thus minute me thus mcqs